Why is everyone freaked out about probate? I'll tell you in a second. And I just rattled off a list real quick, which I'll read to you in a moment. But before we do, imagine there's someone in your life who's about to face the estate planning process and they're deciding whether or not to go with a will or a trust. These are a few reasons why they may decide on a trust because a will will a will will <laughs> a will leads you to the probate process no matter what. And I'm assuming that your friend facing that question as to which way to go will appreciate this information as will be and having you share it. I am Valerie Zametti, an estate planning attorney in New York and New Jersey. And we're here to educate everyone for free. So please drop your questions for us and hopefully together we'll help some folks along the way. Now, in in truth, some states, if everything runs smoothly, the probate process may not be too cumbersome. But there are still some downsides to the process in general, right? It is an extra step after someone has passed. While there's many other things to do, probate creates an extra step. There's going to be extra cost. It requires that all of the closest living relatives sign off on the person you designated to be in charge before the file even gets open. Sounds crazy because you've designated them. But everyone else is going to have to say, yeah, it's okay with me because they have, you know, maybe similar or equal standing. It becomes a public record, which means anyone can place a claim against it. Right now, there is also a delay in getting the person designated to be in control of your assets, which means during that time, your accounts and things are frozen, waiting until the court processes the preparation of the paperwork for the court and crossing all the T's and I's for their requirements that they process it. And then assuming there's no hiccups or withdrawal, you know, delays there that the court then gets the paperwork back. It designates the appropriate party. Again, if everything runs smoothly, assets are frozen during that time. I would say at a minimum, very minimum, couple of months. There's also a creditor period, right? The responsible party cannot distribute the assets in their entirety to the beneficiaries until the creditor period is ended. States where I practice, that's eight, nine months. So you're waiting. Um, if there are any minors involved, the court is going to designate a separate guardian to protect the interests of that um, minor individual or, or disabled individual, uh, mind you, as well. More time, more money, basically, <clears throat> for those processes. Now, the court has many more, again, T's and I's to be crossed and dotted throughout the process to complete the probate, and then eventually close it out. Now, the unknowns as far as delay and, and hiccups that you could face along the way include things such as like, you know, summertime when the court is running a little slower, right? And it may take longer to get that paperwork processed. And if you can't get a, um, you know, what we call an heir at laws, the closest living relative who has standing, if you can't get one of them to sign a consent, then there's a whole hearing process. You have to put that person on notice. They have to try to appear. Then there's a, a date in which folks have to come to court. If you can imagine all these things I'm saying, it's time, it's money, it's delay. Um, and so that's why a lot of people want to stay out of probate. Not to mention one other piece, not actually two others. If you own real property, uh, sometimes in and of that self, that could create a mayhem because in certain states, like if you own property, I think in California, I'm not licensed there, I think the fee and probate is like ridiculous. But if you own property in two states and it's not under a trust, well, your family has to go through probate not only where you live, but also in the state where you own property outside of that state. In addition, if you're a business owner, the interest of your business, the court is going to want to see a valuation of that business, which can be pretty costly to obtain in and of itself. So there's a lot of reasons why keeping the administrative process after someone's passing out of the hands of the court is 
really uh, helpful to the family and making it much more efficient, smoother process, and easier overall in doing all of the administrative steps at that time. So we hope you've learned something new here today and that you choose to share. And as always, please take care.